Sunday painter. I want to introduce you to an artist you may have not heard of, Pierre Bonar. In this short video, we will take a quick look at an artist just to pique your curiosity to learn about a new art and a way of seeing. For more art information like this, subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post a new art related video. So who is Pierre Bonar and how learning about his art may change how you do yours? When I look at Bonar's work I get an uneasy feeling with a shock of direct color. For me it's like looking at a frame that is just a little crooked on the wall, just enough that it makes you want to readjust the frame. Then standing back and it still looks crooked. It captures your attention every time. You just can't stop staring. This is how his work makes me feel. Not to say they're not good, they are, I just can't put my finger on why I like them. I guess that's the draw. A quiet energy. Pierre Bonnard 1867-1947, was a French painter, illustrator, and printmaker, known especially for the stylized decorative qualities of his paintings and his bold use of color. He was a founding member of the post-impressionist group of avant-garde painters, Les Nabi, which we'll look into later. His early work was strongly influenced by the work of Paul Gauguin, and the Prince of Hokusai and other Japanese artists. He was a leading figure in the transition from Impressionism to Modernism. He painted landscapes, urban scenes, portraits and intimate domestic scenes, where the backgrounds, colors and painting style usually took precedence over the subject. That uneasy feeling I was telling you about. He received his education in the Lycée Louis Le Grand and Lycée Charlemagne in Vannes. He showed a talent for drawing and watercolors, as well as caricatures. He painted frequently in the gardens of his parents' country home at Grand Lemps near the Côte Saint-André in the Dauphiné, also showed a strong interest in literature. He received his baccalaureate in the classics, and, to satisfy his father, between 1886 and 1887 earned his license in law, and began practicing as a lawyer beginning in 1888. While he was studying law, he also attended art classes at the Académie Julian in Paris. He met his future friends and fellow artists, Paul Cyrizier, Maurice Dennis, Gabriel Ibels, and Paul Ranson. In 1888 Bonnard was accepted by the École des Beaux-Arts, where he met Edouard Vuillard and Cur Xavier Roussel. He also sold his first commercial work of art, a design for poster for France Champagne, which helped him convince his family that he could make a living as an artist. He set up his first studio at Enru Le Chapelet and began his career as an artist. His friend Paul Cyrizier showed him a painting on a wooden cigar box he made after visiting Paul Gauguin at Pont Avon, using, like Gauguin, patches of pure color. A painting was simply a surface plane covered with colors assembled in a certain order. The style of Japanese graphic arts became an important influence on Bonar. A major exposition of works of Yudamaro and Hiroshige was held at the Durand Rule Gallery, and the Japanese influence, particularly the use of multiple points of view, and the use of bold geometric patterns in clothing, such as checkered blouses, began to appear in his work. Because of his passion for Japanese art, he devoted an increasing amount of attention to decorative art, designing furniture, fabrics, fans and other objects. He continued to design posters for France Champagne, which gained him an audience outside the art world. In 1892 he began to produce lithographs. As I said earlier let's take a look at Les Nabi to understand Bonnard's painting style. Les Nabi were a group of young French artists active in Paris from 1888 until 1900, who played a large part in the transition from Impressionism and academic art to abstract art, symbolism and the other early movements of modernism. The artists shared a common admiration for Paul Gauguin and Paul Cézanne and a determination to renew the art of painting, but varied greatly in their individual styles. They believed that a work of art was not a depiction of nature, but a synthesis of metaphors and symbols created by the artist. In 1900, the artists held their final exhibition and went their separate ways. The Nabi took their name from a Hebrew term which comes from the word Nebiem or Prophets. The Nabi were a group of young artists of the Académie Julian in Paris, who wanted to transform the foundations of art. One of the artists, Paul Cyrizier, had traveled to Pont Avon in October 1888, where under the guidance of Paul Gauguin he made a small painting of the port on wood, composed of patches of vivid color assembled to give the feeling of the port. Throughout their existence the Nabi were a sort of half-serious semi-secret society, who used humorous nicknames and a private vocabulary. 
even the name of the group was secret until 1897. The Nabi were influenced by literature, music and theater of the symbolist movement, and, among some of the Nabi, there was a strong current of mysticism and esotericism. Their approach to their order was partly humorous and whimsical. However, they also had a more serious side. They rejected the materialism of the new industrial age, and admired the poetry of Baudelaire, Mahler May, and Edgar Allan Poe. They placed themselves in opposition to the current of naturalism expressed in the paintings of Courbet and Manet and the literature of Emile Zola. One of the most common subjects of the Nabi was women in an idyllic garden setting, usually picking flowers or fruit. One of the stated objectives of the Nabi was to break down the barriers between art and ordinary life, and in particular the distinction between art and decoration. Much of the art they created was designed specifically to be decorative, for display in salons and dining rooms. They designed screens, murals, wallpaper, tapestries, dishware, lampshades, and ornament for furniture, as well as theater decor and costume design, and graphic design for advertising posters. Considered to be on the cutting edge of modern art during their early period, their subject matter was representational, though often symbolist in inspiration, but was design-oriented along the lines of the Japanese prints they so admired, and Art Nouveau. However, the artists of the Nabi circle were highly influenced by the paintings of the Impressionists, and thus while sharing the flatness, page layout, and negative space of Art Nouveau and other decorative modes, much of Le Nabi art has a painterly, non-realistic look, with color palettes reminiscent of Cezanne and Gauguin. Now let's look into Japanese prints and how this played a part in Bonar's work. The graphic art of Japan, known as Japonism, particularly woodblock prints, was an important influence on the Nabi. The style was popularized in France by the art dealer Siegfried Bing, who traveled to Japan to collect prints by Hokusai and other Japanese artists, and published a monthly art journal, Le Japon Artistique. Japonism is a French term that refers to the popularity and influence of Japanese art and design among a number of Western European artists in the 19th century following the forced reopening of foreign trade with Japan in 1858. From the 1860s, Ukiyo-e, Japanese woodblock prints, became a source of inspiration for many Western artists. These prints were created for the commercial market in Japan. Although a percentage of prints were brought to the West through Dutch trade merchants, it was not until the 1860s that Ukiyo-e prints gained popularity in Europe. Western artists were intrigued by the original use of color and composition. Ukiyo-e prints featured dramatic foreshortening and asymmetrical compositions. Pierre Bonnard was particularly influenced by the Japanese style, his nickname among the Nabi was La Plus Japonard. Bonnard adapted a Japanese format called Kakamono with a narrow vertical canvas, which you have seen in this video. For Bonnard, color was an end in itself, a way of experiencing the world. Color was so important to Bonnard that when he had mixed a color that was particularly to his liking, he would even go back and touch up other paintings with that color. He once persuaded his friend Edouard Bouillard to distract one of the guards in a museum while he touched up a work that had been completed years previously. Bonnard painted many of his scenes from memory, capturing the spirit of the moment rather than the exact person or place. Bonnard did not paint from life but rather drew his subjects, sometimes photographing them as well, and made notes on the colors. He then painted, and especially, colored, the canvas in his studio from his notes. Known for his intense use of color, especially via areas built with small brush marks and close values. His often complex compositions, typically of sunlit interiors and gardens populated with friends and family members, are both narrative and autobiographical. Bonar's fondness for depicting intimate scenes of everyday life, has led to him being called an intimist. His wife Mart was an ever-present subject over the course of several decades. I have all my subjects to hand, he said, I go back and look at them. I take notes. Then I go home. And before I start painting I reflect, I dream. He worked on numerous canvases simultaneously, which he tacked onto the walls of his small studio. In this way he could more freely determine the shape of a painting, it would bother me if my canvases were stretched onto a frame. I never know in advance what dimensions I am going to choose. Throughout the early 20th century, as artistic styles appeared and disappeared with almost dizzying speed, Bonar kept refining and revising his personal style, and exploring new subjects and media, but keeping the distinct characteristics of his work. 
He finished his last painting, The Almond Tree in Blossom, a week before his death in his cottage on La Route de Serra Capillou near La Candette, on the French Riviera, in 1947. The Museum of Modern Art in New York City organized a posthumous retrospective of Bonar's work in 1948, although originally it was meant to be a celebration of the artist's 80th birthday. Hope you enjoyed this short documentary. There is always more to Pierre Bonar and I hope this sparks your curiosity. For more art video and related art subjects, subscribe to my channel. Also don't forget to look outstanding and get your quality distressed artist tea. The link is in the description below. Just take a quick look. You may find something you like or a gift for someone else. Please leave a positive comment. Have a great day and thanks for watching.